It couldn't possibly be any more beautiful. I could think of something that would make it more beautiful. If you married me. And then I just whipped it out. You mean right there on the beach? <laughs> <laughs> All right, very funny, Barry. But it was incredibly romantic. I'm sure it was. Ah! <laughs> All right, come on, you guys. Our man Nate here has decided to pull the trigger. And we've lost a good man. So I say we raise our glasses and toast. Yeah, hey, 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 Congratulations, Nate. So how do you know? Excuse me? How do you know she's the one? You just know, you know? Oh, you mean you get like that special feeling in your happy place when she touches you? No. You meet somebody, you spend time with them, you fall in love, and you want to spend the rest of your life with them. Okay, so all those other people that thought they knew and then got divorced, they didn't really know. But you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess they just don't have your methodology. This is stupid. No. What's stupid is this naive assumption that because you guys have a few things in common and you like crazy every once in a while, you guys are gonna live happily ever after? Yeah, you got the guy a little sloggy. He just got engaged, for yeah, Christ's yeah. sake. Come on, man, leave him be. Look, I'm only saying this because I care. You know the divorce rate in this country is like 50%. That's a one in two chance this thing ends bad. Hey, even if you get married and you spend your entire life with somebody, they're gonna die eventually. <laughs> I'd say that's a pretty bad ending. Seems like a no-end situation. Here's to no-end situation. Hey. <laughs> okay, okay. You guys go ahead and piss all over my parade, but I am ecstatic that I'm getting married to Julia. I mean, she's the most incredible person I've ever met, not to mention beautiful. That may be true now, but people change. And until the shit hits the fan, you really don't know who someone is. We've had our ups and downs. Really? What? You guys like fight over what TV you were gonna buy? Actually, we, we did fight about that. But she came to her senses and realized a bigger screen was better for everybody. It just sounds like you guys have been through some real tough times there, Nate. Okay, you know what, Todd? Just because things haven't worked out for you doesn't mean that I don't know what I'm doing. Look, all I'm saying is I don't want to see you wind up one of those weekend dads picking up your kids at the X's while some other dude is diddling her on your dime. So what's your point? My point is make sure you thoroughly check out the goods before it's too late. Okay, genius. So maybe people do change. But there's no way to know until it actually happens. So you just gotta take it on faith and trust you made the right decision, right? But your decision is based on a limited set of data. She's on her best behavior right now. You ask any guy who gets married to a crazed tigress in the sack wild banshee, and then once she gets that ring, poof, suddenly she loses the passion for the action. Yeah, well, Julia's not like that. Yeah, she's not a crazed tigress in a sack banshee. She is too. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Romeo, you do not have enough information to make an informed decision right now. You need to see what she's like in a real crisis. Like I said, you can't know, and you don't know until it actually happens. But by then, it's too late. And hello, weekend dad. Will you stop saying that, please? Although. What? Unless there was. What? You know, a, a way to know. No, I don't know. Do you know? You could set them up. Yeah, like uh, one of those reality shows, candid camera style. People do it all the time. So you want me to prank my fiance? No, not prank. Test. 
Yeah, they don't just throw cars on the road. They test them over and over again. They do all the test tests. They put them through tests in highly stressful situations and see how they hold up under pressure. You know, the only thing that's being tested right now is my patience. <sighs> Love is not a prank. It's a beautiful thing meant to be cherished. <sighs> Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go home right now to my beautiful fiance and I'm gonna pretend like this conversation never happened. And maybe if you're lucky, I'll still invite you to my wedding. Nathan, they're so beautiful. I'm glad you like them. You always get me the perfect things. <laughs> what? Nothing. Nathan, what is it? It's just that I... I love you so much. Oh, I love you so much too, baby. And other people don't really get our love. What do you mean? I mean, like, we have a very special love, Julia. <laughs> of course we do, baby. Really, really special. Yes, we do, baby. And we know each other, you know? Like, I know you, and you know me, and we know each other. Of course we do, honey. And we would never, ever, ever do anything to hurt each other. Like, run off with the other guy's money. Nate? I'm just saying, because, you know, it happens. Nathan, what are you saying? <laughs> Nothing. I was listening to some stupid talk radio show, and it's... I'm sorry. This is ridiculous to even talk like this when we have such joy to celebrate. Now that's better. Yes, it is. Now, <laughs> how are the invitations coming? Great. It's Franny. Hey. Oh, nothing. Just going over the wedding plans. Yeah. Oh. Really? You're kidding. Why? Uh. All right, we'll just cross Tom's name off the list then. Mm hmm. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Bye. That's terrible. What happened? Shri and Tom are getting divorced. Divorced? They just got married a year ago. We flew to Boston. We gave them those expensive gifts. I know. Why are they getting divorced? I don't know. Anyway, what table are we going to put Shri at now? Hmm. So how do we do this? It's got to be something where I'll know for sure. True serum. Todd and I kidnap her, and we shoot her up, and then you get your answers. Are you crazy? We could go to jail for that. Besides, I don't want to hurt her. He just wants to test her. Well, it is stressful, especially if we smack her around a little. Shut up, would you? Wait a second. I got it. Hi. Hi. Listen, I'm running late. I had some things I had to take care of at the office. Traffic's really bad out there. Oh, so no. I'll probably be another 20 minutes. Why don't you just order? Well, no, no, I'm fine. I'll just, um, I'll just have another glass of wine. That way I'll be a little more charming when you see me. I don't see how that could possibly be possible. Okay, honey, see you soon. Bye. 
<laughs> Did you get stood up? Excuse me? Uh, no, I... Uh, I... I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't pry. But if you were my woman, I wouldn't let you out of my sight. Thank you, that's... it's very flattering. <clears throat> He's just, um... Stuck in some traffic. He's usually very prompt. And I'm actually his fiance. Ah, lucky devil. I wish I would have had my chance. I'm sorry, I don't even know your name. Oh. Apologies. I'm Don. Last name Juan by any chance? <laughs> and she has a <laughs> sense of humor. Uh... Wow, who would have thought? A ravishing creature with wit. Easy does it there, Tiger. And who, may I ask, do I have the pleasure of meeting? Julia. Julia Bennett. Ah. Fair Juliet. <laughs> I know that I shouldn't be so smitten with someone who's already spoken for. But you really are a vision. Thank you. Your fiance is a very lucky man. I have not been as lucky in love thus far. And it really is lonely in my house. With all that square footage, it really is unsettlingly quiet. How big is your house? Oh, mere 20,000 square feet. That's enormous. That's nothing compared to my place in St. Bart's. Really? Your fiance, what's his name? Uh, uh. Oh, come on, Julia. Take your time. Uh. <laughs> Take your time. Of course I know this. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. And stop staring into those baby blue eyes of his. No, of, of course I know. Uh, it's Nathan Roberts, <laughs> my husband. To be. Right, to be, my husband to be. Or not to be, that is the question. No, no it is to be, of course. I'm sure that it's meant to be, as is our meeting. I'm sorry? Darling Julia. All things are meant to be, aren't they? Unless they're not. That's my girl. Touche. But there is no denying that we have met. And I don't believe in coincidence. I believe that all things are the work of a greater power. You might call it fate. Let me give you my card. And then we can talk more about destiny in a more private place, perhaps. Oh, no, thank you. That's very kind of you to offer, but I just don't think that's going to be a very good idea. Yes! All right. I respect your decision, and I'm actually more fond of you because of it. Thank you. But. If fate should bring us together again, you will favor me with the honor of your company, and I'll buy you a drink. All right. Perhaps in St. Bart's. <laughs> I don't know about that. We'll see. Oh, and speaking of seeing, I see my fiance, so I'll say good night. It was really nice to meet you. Likewise. Good night. And how is my beloved? Hi, honey. Well, you got here quickly. That wasn't 20 minutes. Suddenly, it was all clear. Ah. Huh. Who is this man you were speaking to? Who? The one I saw you talking to when I walked in. Oh. Oh, no, he just, uh, he dropped his fork and I picked it up and he was just thanking me. Oh.
<laughs> I don't know about that. We'll see. So she lied about the conversation. So what? She had nothing to hide. I saw and heard the whole thing. It sounds a little fishy to me. I mean, if she has nothing to hide, why didn't she just tell you she was talking to him in the first place? Well, she didn't deny talking to him. No, she just lied about the content and the duration. Something smells rotten. So what? She passed the test. That's the crucial thing. She didn't take the card. That's what we agreed on. Had she taken the card, she would have been culpable. But she didn't. She was tempted, resisted temptation, so ding, she passes the test. Uh, I don't know, buddy. What don't you know? We tested her fidelity, and she was faithful. We threw a gorgeous looking millionaire with a house in St. Bart's at her. And to be honest, I, I sense she wavered, but I mean, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Someone who has eyes for nobody but you. I think you're being a little easy on her. No, not at all. Look, if I was faced with the same test being flirted with relentlessly with some sort of magnificent supermodel who had a house in St. Bart's, not to mention a ton of money, apparently, I wouldn't be human if I didn't buckle a bit. I think you're being way too easy on her. Fact, she lied to you. Fact, she wavered. And fact, she forgot your name. She did forget me. But she remembered it. Is that what you want? Maybe for your wedding gift, I should get you one of those, hi, my name is name tags, so she doesn't forget. You're being too hard on her. Look, I just want to see that she's the right girl for you, that you don't get screwed. You are a great guy, and you deserve the best. You can defend her all you want to me, but you might find yourself in divorce court defending your ass if you don't make sure. Well, she didn't take the card. See, I got a problem with that, too. I would have actually liked to see her take it. What? Yeah, what? He he hear me out. I would have actually liked to see her take the card and then toss it away. Because then you'd know that she was seriously tempted, but decided he wasn't worth it in the end. Because the gorgeous millionaire guy just doesn't stack up to you. Then I'd say, she's the one. But the fact that she didn't take it lets me know that if she would have taken it, She'd be compelled to call him. But that means right now, she's thinking about him. And if she's thinking about him, that means she ain't thinking about you. And a year from now, she's carrying a baby whose paternity isn't quite clear. This is ludicrous. You guys are warped. We're warped? You just set up your fiance. It was your idea. Yeah, but you did it. You know what? I'm going to get out of here before my head explodes. OK, buddy. Have a good night. Um. Uh, okay, have your fun. But I know that Julia loves me, and that's good enough. Well, let me ask you a question. What if you were to lose your job, and you couldn't pay for all those fancy vacations you go on? Would she still love you then? Look, Todd, just because you got burned doesn't mean that every woman's a gold digger. Julia, granted, likes the finer things. But I'm sure if she didn't have any of it, she'd just be happy to be with me. Okay, sounds good to me. Right, Ron? Doesn't that sound good? Yeah, it sounds real good. That's it? You're not going to argue with me or anything? Look, if you're that sure, who am I to say anything? Just let me know when the wedding is, and I'll be there, buddy. Really? Yeah. Have a good night. Yeah, have a good night, Nate. OK. Okay. So the wedding band's gonna cost a fortune, but it's worth it. I always wanted a small orchestra. I just feel like a rock and roll band isn't classy enough for us. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime event, right? I mean, hopefully. Nate. I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> anyway. I'm just glad we have money to pay for all this wedding stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what if we didn't? Oh, come on. You have a great job. We have plenty of money. It's silly to even think that. Is it? Yes. Now let's go spend some more. 
<laughs> okay, phase two. Okay, think, think. What would be a good way to see if she loves me just for my money? <laughs> okay, slow down there, Rockefeller. I think it's pretty clear she doesn't want you just for your money. I mean, come on, let's be serious. Yeah, 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 okay, you're right, you're right. What we need to know, though, is if she'd stay even if I didn't have any. Strike number two, nobody wants to be with a homeless guy. I know some chicks would be fine with it. Yeah, they're also homeless. True. The key here is to see what she would do if you were to suddenly encounter a severe financial meltdown or the accustomed lifestyle were to diminish somewhat, you know? No more fancy dinners, cruises, trips to Jamaica, no high-end toys, no housekeepers. Wait, wait, no housekeeper? How about an occasional cleaning service? Can't afford it. That sounds terrible. I can't believe I'm that broke. As long as she does. Hi, honey. Hi. What are you doing home so early? I thought you had a business meeting with the client. Julia, sit down. What is it, Nate? I got fired. What? Why? I'm being accused of insider trading. You did what? I didn't do anything. I told you I was accused. Well, what are you going to do? Me? Shouldn't this be us? Well, you're the one that got fired. I was set up. Who set you up? I don't know. The feds, jealous co-workers, you know people. No, I don't know. Are you going to go to another firm? I can't. I've been suspended. I mean, my license has been suspended. I can't do anything until my name's cleared. I can't believe this is happening to me. You, before it was me. This should be me. This happened to me. This happened to us. You made this happen to us. I didn't make anything happen. I was falsely accused. OK, you're right. I'm sorry. This is very upsetting. Well, how do you think I feel? I know. I know. I should be more nurturing. This is so terrible. Insider trading? Why did you tell her that? Because I wanted to see if she'd believe me. But you're lying to her. I know. But I want to see if she would believe me if I was ever in that situation where I was being accused of something I didn't really do. So you're lying to her now to see if she'll believe you when you do tell the truth to her about not being dishonest? Exactly. You didn't do it, did you? God, no. Are you sure? Look, I'm sorry. This is it's really upsetting for me. How do you think I feel? I lost my livelihood till I'm vindicated. This must be really upsetting for you. <sighs> yes, it is. And now we're going to probably have to scale back on the wedding. What? Well, I just lost my job. I don't have any income. Well, can't you sell some stuff? Like what, Amway? I mean, some of your assets. You want me to sell my Beamer? How about stocks and bonds? That's my rainy day fund. This is a rainy day, Nate. Julia, the wedding is a bit lavish. We're spending, and when I say we, I mean, I am spending the lion's share of almost $150,000. It's our wedding day, Nate. I want it to be special. Honey, if it was just you and me and the justice of the peace, it would be special. Don't even suggest that. Why not? Because it's my... Because it's our wedding. And we're going to do it once, forever. I want a little pomp and circumstance. But there's so much pomp. 
I mean, the orchestra and the violinists and the lavish decorations and the expensive ballroom and the camera crew and all those people we don't know eating that expensive catered food. I mean, honey, I spent $50,000 on your engagement ring alone. Is that <gasps> enough? Could you even tell me how much it was? Because you seem to think it's nothing. <sighs> Look, I want nothing more for us to be married. It's about being bonded together forever, not the frills. But I like the frills. I like the pretty dress and the decorations and the ballroom and the camera crew following us around everywhere, preserving it forever. What is so wrong with that? Nothing, but I just lost my job. And I might not get it back. And I don't know what I'm gonna do. You'll figure something out. And what if what I figure out means a more modest lifestyle? How much more modest? Justice of the peace modest. It's really modest. I'm not saying it's gonna come to that. I'm just saying, who knows? I don't know if I can live with who knows. I'm asking you to live with me. Are you a who knows? Who knows? I don't know if she's going to make it. We'll see. You don't sound so sure. Well, that's the point of a stress test, to see how people handle it. I don't know how well I'm holding up. Well, I guess it's a bit of a test for you too, my friend. Yeah, I guess so. Good shot. Hey, what happens if she finds out you weren't really suspended? There's no way. And it covered. Took the week off work. What if she runs into somebody from your office? It's practically impossible. We're all the way on the other side of town. Besides, she wouldn't dare talk about it. I think she's actually pretty embarrassed about the whole thing. Shouldn't she be outraged? Yeah, that too. So do you believe him? Well, I don't know. Well, that's a problem. I mean, he's just so driven. And money's become a big thing for us. I mean, the wedding is getting really expensive. So maybe he bent the rules a little bit so he could stay ahead of the curve so he could get you everything you wanted. Yeah, maybe. It sounds like the pressure was too much for him. But still, he shouldn't have done it. Who says he did it? The feds, apparently. Look, Julia, I like Nate. I think you're a good match. But there is a real possibility that he's going to do jail time. I mean, if they put Martha Stewart away, they're going to throw the book at Nate. Look, Franny, you don't even know that he did it. That's not important. What's important is if a judge and jury think that he did it. And you don't want to go to San Quentin on your honeymoon. So what? It's not a life sentence. Martha Stewart got five months. I can live with that. You can live with that? Who am I talking to here? You like fancy things. We're in a nice restaurant. You like to go to Europe once a year. You're not an heiress. Granted, you make a nice living. But if Nate goes to prison, he's not going to recover in this job market anytime soon. We're talking night manager at Wendy's, Target if he's lucky. Are you prepared for that kind of life? Can you live with that, Jules? I know you didn't do that. Why? Because the man I'm marrying wouldn't do that. So therefore, you didn't do it. Right? Of course. That's what I've been telling you. I spoke to my father. And I can get someone at the firm to defend you. Wait, you didn't tell your father I was accused of insider training? No, I just told him that you might need a lawyer for some legal stuff. And he offered. Thank you. For the lawyer? No, for believing me. Well, honey, what kind of a relationship would we have if we didn't believe each other? Exactly. 
I love you. I know you're going to be exonerated. And what if I'm not? Then we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Really, what if I'm falsely imprisoned? Or I lose my license and we have to cut back? I work too, Nate. Julia, it's going to be different. I mean, we won't have as much. What if, you know, we have to move to some crappy neighborhood or send our kids to public school? No public school. Yes, the dreaded public school. Look, look, okay, I'm just saying we will cross that bridge when we come to it. Well, you got one out of two. Yeah, that's 500. Plus, it didn't seem like she'd leave you. She just wants to take it as it comes. Besides, you can't approximate complete poverty in such a short period of time. It takes months, my friend. Well, we don't have months. We got married in July. Oh, so, um, what's she say about uh, scaling it down? She said her parents would help us. That's good, right? No, it's not. I'm not a charity case. It's not what I want out of this. Oh, you just want to find out if she'll bail if you lose your dough. Yeah, that's all. Oh, but at least you know now that she'll believe you when you come up with a gigantic lie. So that's good for potentially so many reasons. Yeah, like if you get caught taking a business trip with another woman. That <laughs> fact notwithstanding, it still doesn't feel right. I still don't know. I don't get the real sense that she'd stick around no matter what. I mean, I just still don't know if I can trust her. <laughs> hey, that's hilarious. <laughs> you're creating these heinously deceptive scenarios, yet you're not sure if you can trust her. You know what I mean. The stress test, remember? You don't put a car on the road unless it survives a battery of unbelievable tests and withstands the punishment. So you want to dole out some more punishment? I don't want to become a weekend dad. That's what I don't want. I don't want to wind up in divorce hell because I didn't do my duty. Did he say duty? He just said my duty. Due diligence, due D, you moron. And you, you still said it. I know. What? Well, the whole reason you didn't buy the last test was she still had control. She said she's still at her job so you guys wouldn't be destitute. But, what if she didn't? You want me to get her fired? No, none of this is real, remember? Sleight of hand, illusions. Yeah. So? Yeah, so? So, talk to her boss and have them appear to lay her off. Then you can see if she flips out. That is a true test on how someone copes with their problems, when it's their own shit. Not when they're forced to deal with somebody else's. That shit's too easy. Then it would have the dual effect of her thinking that if she lost her income and I might not get my job back, then she'll really have to consider a dire future. Exactly. Wait, 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 wait. You want her to consider a dire future? How does that work for anybody? Well, he wants to know if she'd love him no matter what. Oh, so you want to know that even if she's miserable and completely desolate, that she's still going to love you? Yeah. Now, the question is, how do we implement Operation Julia Canning? I mean, I just don't see how I can make that work. Leave that to me. Nate, you're not gonna believe this. What? What happened, baby? Just got fired. Fired? Why? She said they were making changes. But you're senior editor. I know. I, I asked why. She wouldn't tell me. Okay, just come home. We'll figure it out. I'm so upset, Nate. First you, now me. What the hell is going on? Okay, just come home. I'll, I'll see you soon. Hey, buddy. What the hell did you do? Well, it turns out that the publisher for Julia's Mag is a frat brother of mine. So I called him up, explained your situation, and voila. You got my fiance fired because the publisher is a frat brother? Yes, I did. I don't know if that's great or evil. Why would he even do that? The guy's been divorced three times, man. He absolutely loved the concept. Says he wishes he would have thought of it. Would have saved him millions. 
Anyway, he said he'll reinstate her as soon as I give him the word. Oh, and uh, we might have to give him the rights to a magazine piece on when it's over. What? I said might. We're still negotiating. Well, at least you got it done. So how'd she take it? Not well. <laughs> Looks like we might have some serious cracks in the chassis. We'll see. I'm not giving up on her yet. I mean, it just happened. <gasps> this doesn't make any sense. Why? I think I'm cursed. First you, then me. What happened? We were doing so well. I thought you said it was okay if I lost my job. That's because I had a job and I was gonna support us. Now we're both fucked and you might be going to jail. But I'm innocent. Oh, well they fried many an innocent man. True. We'll make it somehow. I just don't understand. Everything was fine. They love me at work. It doesn't make any sense. I'll sue. You can't sue. They reserve the right to dismiss employees at will. Then I'll firebomb. Oh, better idea. Then we'll both be in jail. I thought you said you were innocent. I am. Look, you've got to calm down. I am distraught. I am frantic. Why does God hate us? God does not hate us. Well, then why did he fire us both at the same time? First of all, God did not fire us. Our companies did. Second of all, I got fired last week. I think I'm gonna die. They're just jobs. No, they're not. They are our future. Without money, no kids, no private schools, no golden retriever, no nothing. Still got each other. <laughs> it's too cruel. It was your idea. It was yours. <laughs> okay, well you approved it. Well, I'm gonna abort. She's gonna go over the edge. Isn't that the point? To see if she can hold up? Yeah, but these aren't real world conditions anymore. They're too extreme. It's a stress test. You remember the car analogy? Yeah, well, GM doesn't trump an 18-wheeler on their cars and expect for them to hold up. I'm gonna pull the plug before I incur some serious damage. All right, it's your call. What are you watching? My life fall apart. Julia. I was just sitting here imagining how it would be to be homeless. And you know what, Nate? Maybe it wouldn't be so bad. I mean, aside from being transient with no food or shelter most of the time, I think it wouldn't be that bad. I mean, think of the freedom we would have to do whatever we wanted. We could wander the country hitching rides. We could stow away on a cruise ship until we got to Hawaii. I saw this man. He attached himself to the outside of a plane on a transatlantic flight and he survived. The human will is an amazing thing. And then we could live on the beach in Hawaii. You know I've always wanted to live on the beach in Hawaii. I mean, ideally I'd like to live in a house on the beach, but... I've got some good news. You're a master at the art of spare changing? No, I got my job back. What? Yeah, Gary called me. They're dropping the charges. The feds are walking away. Oh my God, that's so great. <laughs> I told you I was innocent. I never doubted you for a second. Okay, maybe for a second, but no more than that. <laughs> it's okay, baby, don't worry about it. Now that I have my job back, nobody here is gonna be homeless. Well, what about me? Even you won't be homeless. No, I mean, what about my job? <sighs> Look, there's plenty of jobs out there, okay? I don't want you to worry about it. You're gonna be my wife. You're gonna be Mrs. Nathan Roberts. I will always take care of you. I don't want you to worry about anything. It'll all work out. You'll see. Oh, Nathan, I sure do love you. You're the best. Glad to see you're feeling better, Nate. We really missed you around here. Yeah, nasty flu bug, Freddy. But I'm feeling better now. Glad to be back. Hey, honey. Honey, honey, I got my job back. It's like a miracle. I got my job back. That's great. What happened? Uh, Jennifer called and said that they changed their mind and they're sorry, and if I wanted it, I could come back. That's wonderful. I almost told them they could take their job and shove it, and we could just live off your salary. But then I thought, no, I like my job. So until we have kids, I'll just stay there. Well, that's a relief. See, honey, I told you God doesn't hate us. Everything's working out perfectly. Yes, it is. 
It's just so weird how the bad luck left as quickly as it came. Like someone was fucking with us. What kind of sick, terrible person would do something like that? I don't know, but I would never want to meet them. Okay, well, I gotta go. I gotta get back to work so I can keep my job this time. I love you. I love you too, and when you get home tonight, I'm gonna show you just how much. That's a deal. So that's it. You're satisfied. She passed the test. Yeah. I think so. Well, what do you mean you think so? Well, even though we aborted the mission early, while she was raving like an insane person, she did say we would be homeless. So that's good by me. Oh, isn't that romantic? It's a success it is. Oh. What? Nah, I... What? I really shouldn't. What? Oh. It'd be nice to see what she'd do if our lives were threatened. What do you mean? Well, what if, just for fun, we saw how she'd react if our lives were threatened by a masked gunman? You're kidding, right? No. I mean, I know now she's not in it for the dough, but... But what? Would she die for me? What? Yeah, I mean, if somebody shot at me, would she throw herself in front of the bullet? What, is she Secret Service? No. Look, if you're going to devote yourself to one person, wouldn't you like to see that that person would give their life for you? No. I'm not that romantic or twisted. Well, I am. Romantic. I'd take the bullet for her. And that's very chivalrous. I'm just that kind of guy. I mean, love to me is the only thing, you know? I don't want that to die for kind of love. No, but setting up your girl with a masked gunman just to see if she'd take a bullet for you, it's, it's fucking genius, actually. I love it. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> get this bib off me. Nate? Nate. What? I just heard something. It's nothing. Go back to sleep. Oh my god, somebody's in the house. Okay, calm down. I'll take care of it. Where's your gun? I got rid of it. Why? You told me you didn't want it in the house. You actually listened to me? Oh my god, he's coming in here! Where's the jewels and the valuables? Please don't hurt us. You two, get out of bed now. Come here, get on your knees. Kent? What? That sounds like your friend Kent. I don't know who this Kent guy is, but I'm not playing games, lady, so come here and get on your knees. Okay, okay, please, just don't hurt us. Okay, where's the safe? I don't know. I said, where's the <gasps> safe? I don't know! You don't have one. Bullshit! People like you always have a safe. Now, where's the effing safe? There is no safe. I will blow her head off. Oh, my God, no! Shut up, lady! She stop screaming! Okay, please, just don't hurt her. If you don't believe us, kill me. But leave her alone. Okay, maybe I will kill you. Huh. What? Aren't you gonna say don't kill him, kill me instead? Honey, I don't want either of us to be killed. Yeah, but if one of us has to go... Honey, you just told him not to kill me and to kill you instead. I know, but don't you want to return the favor? Nathan, now is not the time to stand on ceremony. Our lives are at stake. Apparently just mine is. Nathan, we're being threatened by a psychopathic killer. No offense. None taken. Now is not the time to argue. This may be our last few moments together. More than you know. What's that supposed to mean? I'm just saying, he might kill me. You don't tell me where the safe is and what the combo is. I will. Who well, just tell him, Nate? Honey, there's no safe. Then why did she tell you to tell me? Because she's stalling. She's trying to save our lives. How will that save your lives? I'm going to find out. But I don't know. She's under duress. Well, maybe I should put her out of her duress. No, please. If you're going to put anybody out of their duress, put me. She's just an innocent. What? Aren't you going to try to take the bullet? Again with that! Well... Well, well, how will it help us? It's not like I'd let you It'd just be a nice gesture. Nathan, this man is threatening our lives! No! He's threatening my life! Your life is no longer being threatened! Will you two just, just shut up? 
I'm gonna pop somebody. Well, apparently it should be me, because I'm the only one willing to die for anybody in this room. Well, maybe if you told them where the safe was and the combo, then no one would have to die. Huh, I knew there was a safe! There is no freaking safe! Then why did she say that? I told you, she's under duress. I think you two are full of it! Will you give us a second, please? We're trying to figure something out here. Like what, if you have a safe? No, like if she'd be willing to die for me. Why is that so important right now? It just is. If I'm gonna go to my grave, I would like to know that you would be willing to die for me. Okay, I'm willing to die for you. Now will you just drop it? How about if I just kill both of you and then you won't have to decide? It's in the den. I thought he was gonna blow it. And then at one point, he actually almost killed us. It's a good thing there were blanks in that gun. He did make sure of that, right? Well, you know, I figured Ken would have. Ken's a moron. <laughs> There's a good chance that- Don't even suggest it, okay? Anyway, I filed a police report. I gave Ken 500 bucks. As long as he keeps his mouth shut, we're good to go. And Julia? What about her? The test, how'd she do? Mm, nothing conclusive. What do you mean? Oh, she said she'd die for me. It didn't really seem like it, so I don't know. I mean, it wasn't such a good test after all. Anyway, we got into a terrible fight. When? During the robbery. You two argued in front of the gunman? It was just Kent. She didn't know that. Well, I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. I mean, the woman would not take a bullet from me. Although later on, she claimed she would. Well, maybe you should have had him shoot you just so she could have felt guilty. Trust me, I thought of it. So, what's next? I don't know. I mean, are you satisfied with your quest? Did she pass the test? Well, let's see. She passed the flirt test. Check butt with a caveat on your part. Eh, I'll give it to her. Okay, then check. She passed the gold digger test. That's a huge check. Yeah. Passed the taking my side test. Check. Kind of passed the... She and I lose our jobs and income, yet still hangs in there, test. But with an assist from you. I call that the mercy play. Okay, fine, so 3.5 out of 4. But this whole taking a bullet thing, I mean, it's highly suspect. Just tell me you do it just to yes me off. I mean, it does not leave me with a good taste in my mouth. You prefer she would have taken a bullet that it made you feel better? Yeah. You know what I mean. All right, all right, so four out of five, I give her a half a point just to give her the benefit of the doubt on the bullet thing. Oh, that's 80%. We're talking a solid B minus. B minus? No way! I need an A. I need an overachiever when it comes to the mother of my child and her undying loyalty to me in the face of disaster. No B minus. So the question becomes, what are you gonna do? I'll tell you what I'm Final exam. Nice. It's gotta be big. Needs to be enormous. Needs to leave no doubt as to my decision to forsake all others. That's what I'm talking about. Oh my god. <laughs> what? what? You fake your own death and you see how much she cries at your funeral. Then you stick around and see how long it takes before she hooks up with some other guy. And just when she's in danger of becoming an old maid, you pop up along with Elvis and Jim Morrison and you say, surprise, we fooled you. And all's forgiven because she's so relieved you're still alive. No, but close. Very, very close. What then? A coma. <gasps> oh my God. That's twisted evil genius. That's just the knockout punch we've been looking for. How do you maneuver something like this? this masterpiece of deception. How do you execute a plan so brilliant when in God's green earth we know there's no possible way you could pull it off? What with the medical issues and the family disturbances. I mean, just the general faking of the vital stats alone would take the virtuoso skills on the level of a Houdini to pull off. I know, it's gonna be tricky. What must be done, must be done. Uh, wait. Although it is a stroke of genius, pardon the pun, when I looked at in this particular situation, I'm gonna have to counsel against it. Why? Because it's, and I can't believe I'm about to say this word after all that's happened, but 
wrong. Oh man, I said it. I feel dirty. Why is it wrong? Just the fact that you're asking me that question means you've gone way beyond the point of no return. This is like that movie Heart of Darkness about the making of Apocalypse Now where you are really in danger of crossing over to the dark side. You're like Colonel Kurtz. You're bald, you're fat, you're in the jungle and you're losing your freaking mind, man. Okay, okay, okay. granted. It is possibly cold-blooded to make the love of your life. Granted, potential love of your life. Nonetheless, to make your beloved believe you're in a coma and in serious danger of dying, but it might be the only way I'll ever get to know. Know what? <sighs> Whether she can live without me. Oh my god, man, of course she'll be able to live. Yes, but would she want to? Are you getting existential on me again? <laughs> Have you been reading Sartre? No! Todd, if Julia stands by me while I'm in a coma, then I'll know that this is a woman worth knotting my eternal soul with. But the problem is you may not have one to knot by then. What you are doing is fundamentally, and I stress, mentally, W-R-O-N-G, it's wrong. It's going too far. You have more than enough data. Oh, so she, she won't take a bullet for you? Who cares? You really want a woman who's that nuts anyway? Yes, I mean, no. It's not crazy. It's love. Uh, okay, Nate. Uh, this is where we part ways. I can no longer endorse these shenanigans. Fucking Mary Julia. Even I can see she's a great girl, and I'm the guy who started all this. I'm sorry, Todd. I just can't do that. Where are you going? Oh, let me guess. Coma, right, Kurtz? Yes, uh, I'll be right there. Please tell me he's gonna be okay. I'd love to, but right now I'm not sure. Listen, do me a favor and please step into the waiting room for a few minutes while I perform some procedural examinations on the patient. Okay. This way. You gotta be out of here by tomorrow. Why? Can't risk my job. I can't believe I did this to begin with. You owe me. Remember that tip on Apple I gave you? Why do you think I'm doing this in the first place, Nate? I could lose my license over this. Nobody can prove anything. How do we explain a man in a coma eating a sandwich? Did anybody see that? No, but they could have. And the nurses are getting very suspicious that you have your own personal nurse that they've never seen before. Great attention to detail, right? Yes. If this farce were an art project, it would be, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but a masterpiece. Thank you. Wasn't a compliment. Listen, your fiance got the point. You gotta end this. One day in here and my performance is all we agreed upon. But I still don't have conclusive evidence. The woman slept in a chair all night with you for God's sake. So what? That's normal, one night. We'll see what she's made of after a month. A month? Are you out of your mind? Why don't you just play crazy? It suits you better. I'm pulling the plug, no pun intended. Wait, that's it. What? Tell her you're gonna pull the plug and see how she reacts. You're a sick, sick man. That's why I'm in the hospital. <sighs> Miss Bennett, could you come in here, please? Yeah. He started to move when I was testing his reflexes, so that's an extremely good sign. <gasps> oh my God. He opened his eyes. 
Nathan? Who's Nathan? Who am I? Where am I? The doctor said there was nothing physically wrong, and the trauma probably caused the coma and now the amnesia. I took him home, but I have no idea if he'll ever be the same. He doesn't even know who I am. I just don't know what to do. This is just so bizarre. We have been through so much in these last few months. I feel like Job, like God is testing me or something. Yeah, I'll keep you informed. No, no, you don't need to come out here. Okay. Yeah, I will. Okay, bye. Oh, Nathan. Oh. It's been almost three weeks and he's getting a little better. His motor skills have returned almost completely, but he still doesn't remember much of what happened before the accident. You don't know if he'll ever be back to normal. No, there's no way to tell. So what are you gonna do? I don't know. I honestly don't know. What's wrong? I'm just so upset, Nathan. You don't even know who I am. You're Julia. No, I am not just Julia. I was the love of your life. And you were mine. And we were gonna get married. Even though both of us had horrible things happen to each other, it didn't matter because we loved each other. And that was all that was important. But now you don't even know me. And quite frankly, I'm forgetting who you are. And I would do anything to get you back. Just to have you back here with me, the way it was. How perfect our life was. I just really need that. And I think about being with someone else if you never come back. But the truth is, I don't want someone else. <laughs> but I don't want the non-you either. And I don't know if you're ever going to come back. So I guess I'm screwed. Maybe. <laughs> I would wait forever for you. If that's what it took, Nate, because I do love you. <sighs> so, if you're in there, and you can hear me, and you can really, really remember me, remember who I am, remember who you are, remember who we are to each other, then God damn it, could you do it quickly, because uh, frankly, I am dying inside. It is so 
freaking lonely without you, Nathan. What's the use? You don't even hear me. Julia? What? Julia. Nathan? No, I mean, Julia. It's you, right? Nate? I had the weirdest dream. Uh, I was without you. And I didn't remember who you were, or who I was, or who we were. And I heard your voice calling me. Then I woke up. What are we doing at the dinner table? Was I sleepwalking? <laughs> Just beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I can't believe after all this craziness, it's finally here. Well, you earned it. <laughs> now, this is your reward. <laughs> oh, Thank you so much. I feel so blessed. Uh, funny. All's well that ends well. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've really pulled it off, pal. I gotta hand it to you. Yeah, well, you know, I felt I had righteousness on my side. You know, the end justified the means. And now, I can confidently enter into this union of marriage knowing I made a wise decision. And you know, it really is quite a good system. I'm thinking about writing a book about it. Don't you dare. But just remember, this is our little secret. No one must ever know. If and when you get married, you can use the system, but you can't breathe a word about it to anybody. You haven't told anyone, have you? Other than my frat brother? Yeah. No, are you crazy? Besides you, me, Ron, and the frat brother, nobody knows. And he won't tell. No, I swore him to secrecy. But he still might want to do that magazine article. Todd. Okay, I'll tell him he can't do it. That's better. And of course, Ron won't say anything. Nah! Almost go time. It sure is. I'm so glad everything worked out for you, honey. Oh, thank you, Franny. Oh. oh. What? Would you forget something? No, I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, do you want me to go with you? Uh, no. I think I need a little me time. Okay. I think it's gonna be a while before I'm alone again. Yeah, like 60 years. <laughs> okay, but hurry up because people are waiting. You don't wanna make them wait too long. You know what? I've waited a long time for this moment. So if they have to wait a little bit, it's fine. Oh, I love you. I'll be right back. OK. Who is she? I don't know. You know women. Everything's got to be perfect. She's probably just primping. Must be the line, huh? Yeah. Mm. Hey, aren't you Ken Clarkson? Yeah. Ron Neighbors. Oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> oh, so I heard it got a little crazy when he did your thing. What thing? You know, the thing. Oh, you know about that? No, I came up with the idea. You came up with the idea to play a practical joke on her? Practical joke. Is that what we told you? Yeah, I mean, it, it sounded kind of twisted, but hell, he gave me 500 bucks, so I didn't ask too many questions. <laughs> That's rich. What do you mean? Nothing. 
Come on, you can tell me. No, no I, I shouldn't. Come on, I won't tell anyone. Okay, Nathan tested Julia. What? Yes. He put her through a series of situations to see how she'd react. I mean, I for one thought it was a little cruel, but in retrospect, it's brilliant. In fact, I'm probably gonna do the same thing when I get married. That's incredible. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, neither did I. Oh, shit. Where is she? Well, maybe she got cold feet. Funny. Well, there she is. Should she be running? She looks mad. Yeah. Furious. Uh-oh. You motherfucker! Honey? You tested me? How dare you? Oh, this is all some big fucking game to you, huh? You lying, evil, selfish bastard. How could you do this? You said you loved me. Is this how you love someone? I had to know. You had to know? Well, now I know. I know what a turd you are. And all these people know what a turd you are. Hey, everybody, guess what my husband-to-be did? He tested me. No, oh, no, not for STDs. He made up a bunch of shit to see how I'd respond. Isn't that right, shithead? Well... But you know what? I passed the test, but you failed. Because when you love someone, and I mean really love someone, you trust them and you live with it. For better or for worse, in sickness and in health, but not in deceit. You pretended to be in a fucking coma. I can't even begin to tell you how fucked up that is. She's right. Shut up. I swear to God, Nate. If all these witnesses were not here, I would shoot you dead. But you know what? You are dead. To me. So, uh, I guess everyone can go then. You're not a schmuck. I'm not? No, you're a putz! You're not good enough to be a schmuck! But I was- Shut up! I can't believe that this came out of my dick! Is there a reason I should not disown you right now? You love me? No, not good enough. Do you believe I'll make it right? The only thing I believe about you right now is that you're a putz! You broke your mother's heart. You broke my heart. You broke everyone at the wedding's heart. Oh, I'm sorry, everyone at the non-wedding's heart, which is almost impossible to do. Most importantly, you broke that little girl's heart, which is the most unforgivable of all. I had to know. What, that one day she wouldn't get up and walk out on you? Well, guess what, she did. I guess you didn't plan on that scenario, unless this is part of the test. No, I'm, I'm done testing. You want guarantees? Go to Midas. They'll give you one. On a muffler. A woman is not a muffler. Though sometimes I'd like to muffle your mother. But I can't. Relationships are hard work. Sometimes they work out. Sometimes they don't. And sometimes, there's nothing you can do about it. But what you don't do is carry out some asinine plan to test the woman you plan on spending the rest of your life with. Unless you're planning to spend the rest of your life single, which in your case would be a good idea. But I... Shut up! Until she forgives you, 
I don't want to hear another word out of you. Are you disowning me? What did I just say? Call it what you like. But your mother and I can no longer be a party to any more of this craziness. We thought you had gone into a coma. Right now, I wish you were in one. Sorry. You're sorry. My parents disowned me. My boss fired me for real this time. Nobody will even talk to me anymore. My entire reputation has been destroyed. Not to mention that the love of my life will never talk to me again because of your stupid stress test you talked me into. I didn't talk you into it. I merely suggested... You know, if I wasn't so pathetic, I might very well strangle you right now. But then I'd be up for murder charges. Although at this point, I think life behind bars might be a step up. I really don't see you survive in prison. Don't push it, Todd. OK. Look, I know you're mad, and I know you're upset. And while I did suggest, OK, talk you into doing this, there was a point where I urged you to quit. But you just had to know. So if you want to blame me, go ahead. But let's not kid each other. You took the ball, and you ran with it. Guilty as charged. Where are you going? Hell, most likely. Why did you just come in? Did I leave the door open? No, I used the spare key you gave me in case you got locked out. And I've been back there knocking for like five minutes. Didn't you hear me? No, I just, the music's too loud. What are you listening to? It's a, uh, it's your song, isn't it? Who's mine? Do I have a song? Cut the crap, Julia. It's your innate song, isn't it? Was our song. Why are you listening to it? You have to move on, Jules. I mean, I understand you have to mourn, but it's been six months, and you're young, and you're beautiful, and, and I'm still devastated, all right? I mean, why did he have to do that? Because he's a schmuck, and when you're a schmuck, you do schmucky things, like test your fiance to see if she's worthy. I mean, we've been over this a thousand times. I know that you loved him, and maybe you still do, though God knows why, but he did you a favor. I mean, he let you see a side of him you would have never have seen had he had not done it. And then you would have been married, and then you would have realized one day that you're married to the devil. So <sighs> consider yourself lucky. If I were you, I would send him flowers to thank him. Though, hopefully they'll be on his grave. <laughs> Franny. <gasps> what? You don't want to see him dead? No. Not even a little? Maybe a little. See? Not really. OK, well, when you're happily married, you can be friends with him. Mm. And then you can visit him in the insane asylum, which is where you're going to end up if you don't knock it off. You know, I know. I know. You're right. And I keep telling myself not to care about him, but I can't help it because... What? <sighs> you know what? You're right. You know what I found? Your sanity? <laughs> no. I was going through some of the stuff Nate left behind, and I found this. Who is this? That's the actor he hired to flirt with me when he first set me up. Delicious. <laughs> and the question is, why didn't you leave Nate for this guy? I mean, talk about an ideal showering partner. Well, I did think about it. Aha! There is a vestige of good in Mr. Nathan Roberts, after all. What are you doing? Well, Nate set you up, and now I'm going to. Franny, absolutely not. No, stop it. <laughs> oh, Franny, hello, is uh, Trent there? This is Trent. Oh, hi. Um, this is Franny. I'm calling you on behalf of the beautiful uh, Julia. Franny, uh, I'm sorry, do I know you? Um, no, but you know Julia. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm... 
a bit confused. You were hired to fool her by her fiance, um, former fiance. Oh God, I, I am so sorry. I, I didn't completely know what that was about. They told me that it was a practical joke. Uh, Hope I didn't cause any damage. Oh, no, we don't blame you. It was completely him. Oh, good. Because um, I could tell that she was really special and uh, beautiful, too. And I kind of felt bad doing it. Um, well, good, because um, Julia thinks that you can make it up to her by taking her out to dinner tomorrow night. Um, unless, of course, you're um, busy, or married, or have a girlfriend, or gay? <gasps> not married, just broke up with a girlfriend. Definitely not gay that I know of. And tomorrow night I was just planning on going to the gym. Okay, great. Well, then it's set. Julia? Yes. Hi, Nathan. Oh, my God. Julia? Oh, I can't believe it's you. I left a million voicemail messages. And I, I told you I knew that you didn't want to talk to me anymore, but I just wanted you to know how sorry I am and what an ass I was and how much I miss you. And I beg your forgiveness. And how my prayers have been answered. You finally called me. Thank God. How are you? I'm great. Listen, I don't really have time to talk. I just wanted to say thank you. Thank me? For, for what? For setting me up with such a great guy. What are you talking about? I didn't set you up with anybody. Yes, you did. Trent. Who the hell's Trent? Oh, that's right. Maybe you know him as Dawn. The guy you set me up with at the restaurant? The actor? Anyway, I just want to say thank you. He's a dream. You're calling out with that guy? Well, no, not officially. Not yet, anyway. This is our first date tonight. We're going to Beach A for dinner. Beach A? That's our place! We don't have a place. There is no we. But I do love the food and the ambiance, so... I suggested it to him. No! Anyway, I gotta go. Toodaloo. And... Thanks again. Toodaloo! Toodaloo! So, I get this call from my agent, and he asks if I want to play a practical joke on this girl. And I'm like, I don't know what to pay. But then, I meet you. And I think that you are totally beautiful. But you know, what do you do? I'm on the job, so I have to keep it professional. But I am so glad that it didn't work out between the two of you. Well, I'm glad to see my loss was your gain. I'd like to see that it's your gain, too. Let's drink to gain. I am so tired of loss and mourning and craziness. I just want a normal, happy existence. <gasps> what? What's wrong? That guy. He just got hit by a car. Oh, he's fine. He's getting up. Probably nothing. No, he looks hurt and dazed. He's wandering out into the street. A car could come by and kill him at any second. Oh. Oh, he's fine. He's probably just drunk and fell. Well, if he's drunk and he wanders out, he'll get killed anyway. We gotta stop him. Stop him? You said you wanted no more craziness. Trent, are you actually suggesting that I let that guy kill himself? No, I'm just saying that you can't rescue everybody. Oh. Oh, he turned around.
You're right. I'm sorry. I'm just so tightly wound lately after this whole thing that happened to me. I just need to let loose. <clears throat> let things take care of themselves and just worry about me. I am glad to hear that. Because a young, beautiful girl like you can't save the whole world. Oh my god. Where are you going? Don't do it! Don't do it! Whatever it is, it's not worth it! Nate? What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm killing myself. Well, good luck with that. Wait a second, you were just screaming not to do it. Well, that was before I knew it was you. Julia, I'm so sorry. It's too late for that, Nate. So just get up. Don't do it, buddy. No, no, it's okay. He can do it. Julia. It's okay. It's Nate. Nate? My ex. Oh, Nate. Hey, man. What's he doing here? Yeah, what are you doing here? What do you think I'm doing here? I know, I know. You're killing yourself. Julia, that's a little callous. Hey, Trent, butt out, all right? This is my business. If I want to be callous to the jerk who ruined my life, then I'll be callous. OK, I'm just saying he looks a little down on his luck, and you don't want to push him over the edge. He is laying in the middle of the street. He's got a pretty good chance of killing himself. He's bluffing. It's just another one of his sick pranks. He won't do it. OK, do you want to know why I came down here? After you called me and you told me you were going out with him, I knew I had ruined my life, and I was never going to get you back. So I didn't want to live anymore. And I just wanted to see your face one last time. So you manipulated me again into trying to save you. This is really too much, Nate. No, that's not how it was. I just wanted to come down here and get a glimpse of you. And then when I saw the two of you and I saw how happy you were, I didn't want to live anymore. I didn't want to live in a world without you, OK? So no manipulation, no test, just a really screwed up guy realizing there's no turning back. You know, a car is going to come down this street any second. Will you excuse us, please? We're talking. Look, Nate, just because you lost me doesn't mean you have to kill yourself. Just learn your lesson and don't screw up next time. You just don't get it, do you, Julia? Get what? That you want to die like I did at my wedding after I found out my fiancé was the devil? Or for weeks afterward when I couldn't leave my bed and face anyone I know? You mean that? Maybe we could move this back to the sidewalk. Relax, block. will you? Look, Nate, you are already dead to me. So don't go being dramatic and killing yourself in front of me and further screwing me up for the rest of my life. I can't even kill myself, right? You son of a bitch. Why did you have to do that? I'm going to give you two some privacy and go somewhere where it's safe, and I recommend you do the same. Would you just please? OK. I mean, really, Nate? I understand not being sure. You don't think I had my doubts? And they weren't even the ones brought up by your stupid games. But that's life. You take the leap and you hope for the best. But I got the worst. And here's the problem. When you have real love, you can't just abandon that person, even though they did something that no self-respecting person would ever imagine forgiving them for, because you can't get them out of your heart. Because you keep seeing all those special, tender moments. All the sweetness and the intimacies, you just can't forget, no matter how hard you try, they just won't go away. And it makes you crazy. It makes you want to kill that person for betraying your trust. It makes you want to call that person up and tell them what you know will send them over the edge. And in your case, it's that I'm going out with this guy to our special place. And you know what, Nate? I knew when I called you that I could send you over the edge and that you might do something like this. So I believe that you're really going to do this. And now that I see you here, I realize that I failed your test. I'm worse than you. Don't go killing yourself because of me, Nate. Because I'm not worthy. I guess you found out. So just get up, Nate. <laughs> Why 
are you laughing? <laughs> because we're crazy. First me and now you. I'm not crazy. I'm just seeing things for what they are. Oh, you're crazy. That's what I thought when I was doing all that stuff to you in the name of sanity. <laughs> Why are you crying? <laughs> because love makes you crazy. <laughs> crazy. What's wrong? We're out in the middle of the street. We're gonna get killed. We are crazy. Let's get out of here. If there is anyone present who knows of any reason why these two should not be married, let them speak now or forever hold their peace. Trust me, we're good. <laughs> I can't believe that this came out of my dick! <laughs> You're gonna keep doing that, I'm gonna have to keep saying I'm it. I'm sorry, that's <laughs> very funny. Well, what do you mean you think so? Well, I'll tell you in a second. As soon as it's a trolley. That's just the kind of guy I am. You know, love is the only thing that matters to me. Right. Look, 